hurting. Also an exponential, I'm sorry, also an inverse is a reflection over y equals x. Correct, everybody? Remember this back to a while back. Okay, so I switch my x, y points, and I graph them. So everybody look. Instead of going negative 3 up an, up an eighth, I went over an eighth, down negative 3. Does everybody see? Yeah. Then I went over a fourth, so over a little bit more, down 2. I'm talking about the red function here. I went over a half, down 1. I went over 1, up 0. I went over 2, up 1. And I went over 4, up 2. And then I graphed this. So that would be a logarithmic equation. We just graphed the logarithm. So a logarithm is an uh, inverse of an exponential. So I graphed the inverse, which is the logarithm, and we'll talk about that a little bit deeper here. But think about it, guys. If this is the inverse, where is, we're going to go from a horizontal asymptote to a vertical asymptote, right? When we have a vertical asymptote at this, at y equals, sorry, at x equals 0. Okay, awesome. So we'll get into it in more in depth, but I just wanted to point out that I just graphed the inverse of this exponential and that is a logarithm. But we'll get into it. What was that? I know, I don't know how, I was actually thinking. All right, thanks for letting me know. So we got to do our best and then I'll, I'll ask the guys. Um, okay, so a logarithm, like I just said, is the inverse of an exponential function. So that is also true that an exponential function is the inverse of a logarithmic function. So I'm going to point something out, guys. If we have 2 times x, what undoes multiplication? This is division, right? They undo each other. So multiplication and division are inverses. That's what an exponential and logarithm are. They're inverses of each other. They undo each other. So an exponential function is the inverse of a logarithmic function, and a logarithm is an, um, is an inverse of an exponential. So this is what the equation of a logarithm will look like. Y is equal to log to the base A of X. So technically it's like this, like the X is entrapped inside of the log equation. So it's red, Y is equal to log to the base A of X. Base A is always written kind of small down here, like in the little corner. Um, and that's true, IFF is a mathematical if, it means if and only if, if and only if a to the y equals x. So I'll show you what they were doing here algebraically. I really just teach this algebraically. Logs undo exponentials, exponentials undo logs, and then it all makes sense here. So I'm going to show you something. If I was given, if I gave you a log of the base a of x, and we wanted to write it as an exponential, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of how we find an inverse. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Because I think this kind of confused people last time without saying this. Okay, I'm deleting this. Okay, let me show you how we go from here to here. Ready? So the first thing we should do is, well, they didn't do this in the book, but I would say this is our first step when finding an inverse. We put x and y. So x is equal to log to the base a of y. Correct, everybody? Okay, now next step is to undo the logarithm of base a. To undo log to the base a, you've got to do... Base A of both sides, exponential, base A. So we know this is base A raised to the Y power, right, everybody? So you get what I'm saying? So I did base A of both sides. So now over here we have A raised to the X equals base A and log to the base A, cancel out, that's what inverses do, equals Y. So that's how we go from a log to an exponential function. Did everybody see that? Shift using inverses. So let's go the other way. Um, let's start here. So given y is equal to a raised to the x, that's y is equal to base a raised to the x. If we wanted to rewrite that as a logarithm, we would undo, we need to undo base a, correct everybody? So we would do log to the base a of both sides. Log, oh, but we first switch x and y, sorry. So we should have switched x and y. So this is an x, this is a y. So we took log to the base a of both sides. So now over here we have log to the base a of x equals log to the base a and base a cancel out. So y drops down. So you have to just be able to switch back and forth, but it's really just using algebra. Does that make sense, everybody? So logs undo exponentials, exponentials undo logs. Yes? No, it's just base. Like, so this is log to the base a, right? And then this is base a, right, over here on the exponential. 
So when we take base A of both sides, like you're doing, you're taking both sides and putting a, it's like base A, those are raised up in the exponent of base A. Oh, okay. And so they just, they undo each other. They essentially divide out to be one. Okay, so we can, so if we're given a log, we can rewrite it as an exponential and evaluate it that way. Or if we're given an exponential, we can rewrite it as a log. There's benefits to both. So for example, guys, if I said to you, rewrite this as an exponential, do you see how we have log to the base three of nine equals two? What we would do is we would undo log to the base three. How do you undo log to the base three? Base three both sides. So we're gonna base three both sides. So now base three and log to the base three cancel out, so we have nine. Everybody see what I'm saying? Equals three squared. So three squared equals nine. So do you see how that's a true statement? So we know we undid it correctly. You get what I'm saying? So if you're asked to go backwards, if you're asked to go five to the base three of 125 and rewrite it as a log, the problem is we have, so we have base five. So to undo base five, you'll take log to the base five of both sides of the equation. So log to the base five and base five cancel out. So three drops down is equal to, and then over here we have log to the base five of 125. So it kind of entraps it when we take the log. I feel like if you take the sine inverse of both sides, you know how it entraps the other side? Mm -hmm. That's like what log's doing, is entrapping the other side. Not multiplying. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay. So that's just rewriting it as a log. Like, notice we didn't solve anything. We're just taking it from one form to another. Yes? So, so we use log to make sine of 25. So, it's not multiplying, like, exponentially. No, so this is what it means. This log to the base 5 of 125 equals 3 is what this essentially means. So it's really 5 to the third equals 125. So we're not evaluating anything. Oh. We're just rewriting it. And we're going to start evaluating these in a minute, and then you'll see the point to this. Oh. It's just learning that we can go back and forth. Okay. Yes? Um, no, it needs to be log to the base 5 of 125. Good question. Okay, so it says evaluate. This is going to be the same as your homework. So notice this one has no equal sign, right? Evaluate. So what we can do is take this and rewrite it as an exponential and then evaluate it that way. Does that make sense, everybody? So we don't know what it's equal to, so let's set it equal to x. So now let's rewrite it as an exponential using inverses. So log to the base 2, we're going to base 2 both sides to undo log to the base 2. So base 2 and log to the base 2 cancel out, and we have 32 is equal to 2 raised to the x power. So now that we've rewritten the as an exponential, it's easy to solve, just like we did in the bell quiz. Does everybody see what I'm saying? So that's the point of being able to switch back and forth. So then 2 to the what power equals 32? Isn't it 4? So that would be x equals 4. Oh, it is 5. Yeah, you're right. It is 5. So... That would say, so log of the base 2 of 32 equals 5 would be our answer. Does that make sense? We just rewrote it as an exponential and evaluated it that way instead of evaluating the log. Okay, here we go. Log of the base 3 of 1. Set it equal to x because we have no idea what it's equal to. We're evaluating it. And then we can rewrite it as an exponential. So we would base 3 both sides. So log of the base 3 and base 3 cancel out. So 1 is equal to 3 raised to the x. Good, x equals 0. So log to the base 3 of 1 equals 0. So equals 0. So I don't want to necessarily put x equals 0, but that equals 0. Do you get what I'm saying, everybody? Log to the base 3 of 1 equals 0. Okay. Yes. So log to the base 4 of 2. I just set it equal to x to rewrite it. So then we would do base 4 of both sides. Log to the base 4 and base 4 cancel out. So 2 is equal to 4 to the x power. Let's see if you can do that one. 1 half. I was quick. Can everybody make sense of why it's 1 half? You sure? Everybody? Okay. Because I had people on 80 say, could you show me how you could do that algebraically? Does anybody want to be it algebraically or no? Yeah? It's a few people. Okay. So here's, this is, so a lot of people are just able to see it, but let's say you weren't. We need to get it in the same base, correct? So this is 2 to the first power is equal to, 4 can be written as base 2. That would be 2 squared. So I'm rewriting 4 as 2 squared raised to the x power. 
Base 2, base 2. So now we have, we can set 1 equal to 2 and then raise a power to a power and you multiply. So we have 2 to the first equals 2 to the 2x. So now we can literally just say the bases are the same. So 1 equals 2x. So x equals 1 half. So we just got it in the same base. That's algebraically, but a lot of people are able to just see it. Okay. So our answer to this was 1 half. Log of the base square of 2 equals 1 half. I meant to just circle that. Okay, awesome. Log of the base 10 of 1 over 10. What is it? Negative 2, right, everybody? So we can, should we rewrite it? Base 10, base 10, both sides, guys. Log of the base 10 and base 10 cancel out. 1 over 100 equals 10 to the x. So then it's negative 2. So log of the base 10 of 1 over 100 equals negative 2. Do you get what I'm saying, everybody? So rewriting it as an exponential a lot of times just helps us evaluate it easier. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some basic properties of logarithms. Here they are. So a lot of them will just make sense. If you want to write them down, you can. But a lot of them will just make sense. This is the thing that Miss Summers came and told me that her students are struggling with in calculus. She said, make sure you hit really hard on this for before they come to calculus because they're struggling with it, which is pretty easy stuff. So make sure you're paying attention and really taking it all in. So we have log the base a of 1 will be equal to 0. So log the base a of 1 equals 0. So why is that true? Well, that's because no matter what, if we rewrite it as any base to the 0 power, isn't it always 1? Any base to the 0 power is 1. So if we have log to any base of 1, it's going to come out to be 0. Does everybody understand? Okay. Now, right here, log of the base a of a is always going to simplify to be 1. Log of the base a of a will always simplify to be 1, which makes sense. Think about it. Base a and log of the base a cancel out to be 1. Does everybody see what I'm saying? Like, well, those are inverses of each other. That's what inverses do. And that is also because a to the first equals a. So log of the base a of a to the x. Don't log of the base a and the base a cancel out. So that gives us x. So to me, it's easier just to think of it like that. The inverses undo each other. Everybody seeing what I'm saying? Yes. No, if it's log of the base A and A, base A are what cancel out. Log to the base A undoes base A, and base A undoes log to the base A. Yeah. So X, X is our answer for this. Does that make sense? So if we have A, this is the one right here that she said. She came and drew this exact thing and said, my calculus students cannot grasp this. I'm like, too long. A, base A, raised to the log of base A. Aren't those inverses of each other? Yeah. So wouldn't it simplify to be X? Yeah. Right? Makes sense, okay? And then if we have, because of the one-to-one -one property, we know that if we have log to the base A of X equals log to the base A of Y, since they're both log to the base A, we can simply solve by saying x equals y. Does everybody understand? That's the same as like what we were just doing with exponentials, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we have those written down and then we can practice some of these? Yeah. So, so just watch. It says simplify. So we're just using properties of logarithms. I mean, yeah, some basic properties of logarithms to simplify. Or we could go as far as to completely rewrite it as an exponential, right? and then solve it. You get what I'm saying? But it's wanting us to be able to do it quickly. Log to the base 4 of 1 is 0. Anything to the log to any base of 1 is going to be 0. Why is that? Once again, reminder, if you put 4 to the 4 to the 0, it's going to equal 1. Right, everybody? Okay, so let's log to the base 1 fourth of 1. 0. So the answer would be 0. All right, what about this one? Log to the base 3 of 3 squared. Two, right? Log of base 3 and base 3 cancel out. They're inverse of each other. So if we have log square root of 7, sorry, log of the base square root of 7, square root of 7, we're going to have 1, correct, everybody? This and this undo each other, so we get 1. 6, log of the base 6 of 20. 20. Very good. Very straightforward, guys. Heart. So 20 was our answer. So smiley face, log of the smiley face of heart. 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 That's what she literally said her students in calculus are struggling with. So don't forget that because I don't want her to come and say, you didn't teach them that last year. I did. I'll, I'll pull up this video and this part of the video. Then I'll come in during your calculus class and lay down the law. Okay.
Okay. So solving simple logs using the one-to-one -one rule. Do you see how we have log to the base 3, log to the base 3? Yeah. So we can literally just say x equals 12 here. Everybody see why? Just like because of the one-to-one -one rule. Or you can just use algebra. Watch. If you just use algebra, it's almost just as easy. I need to undo. I need to get x alone. So I need to undo log to the base 3. So I'm going to base 3 both sides. Base 3 and log to the base 3 cancel out. Base 3 and log to the base 3 cancel out. X equals 12. You see how algebra is? It's just as easy. Okay, so we have log of 2x plus 1 equals log of x. Log, log. So can we just say x equals 2x plus 1? Now solve for x. So we subtract 2x, right? Negative x equals 1. x equals negative 1. Questions on that? Now, this is actually log to the base 10. If there's not a base there, it's base 10. But I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, log to the base 4, log to the base 4. So we can simply say x squared minus 6 because of the 1 to 1 rule. Or we can do this, base 4, base 4, both sides. Log to the base 4 and base 4 cancel out. So we can say x squared minus 6 equals 10. Solve for x. So when we add 6, x squared equals 16. Square root both sides, x equals... Plus or minus 4. Thank you to those who did not forget the plus and minus. Very good. Okay. Questions on that? Okay. Awesome. Okay. So it says write each x. Okay. Go. Go for it. Go for it. Do this on a whiteboard. Hold it up. Show me you can do it on the homework. Guys, okay, so that should be like super quick. We need to undo both. Well, we want to rewrite it as an exponential. So we base 3 both sides. Base 3, log to the base 3, cancel out. 81 equals 3 to the fourth power, which is a true statement. So I know I did it right. Over here, we have 8 squared equals 64. Rewriting it as a log. It's base 8. So log to the base 8 of both sides. So then log to the base 8, base 8 cancel out. Two, two drops down. Log to the base 8 of 64. You don't need parentheses, but I just want to re-clarify that that's in the, in the log. Okay, ready? I'm going to give you a little bit of time to do 1 through 29 in your book. Um, that's part of your homework, so I'm going to give you in class time. So page, I hope, 236. So, if you were asked to graph, guys, if you were asked to graph a logarithm, just rewrite it as an exponential, plot those xy points, and then switch your xy points and graph that, right? Yeah. So, the xy points of xy of 3 to the, let's go with negative 2. That's 1 ninth, isn't it? Yeah. And then negative 1 is 1 third, 0 is 1, if we plug in 1 we get 3, if we plug in 2 we get 9. So then our logarithm, um, log to the base 3 of x will be 1 ninth negative 2, um, 1 third negative 1, 1 0, 3 up 1, and 9 up 2. So let's, I'm going to graph the original exponential in red, whoa. Okay, yeah. It's worse now? No. Okay, here we go. There's the exponential, and now I'm going to graph these, the logarithm in green shirt. So we're going over one ninth down two, over one third down one, over one up zero, over three up two, over. 9 up, I meant over 3 up 1, and then over 9 up 2. So guys, if you can graph an exponential, then you can graph a logarithm. You just switch x and y. Any questions on that? Okay, let's talk domain range on the original. Domain on the original. Okay, all real numbers. What's my range? 0 to infinity, not including 0. What's the domain on this? This is important because a lot of times we'll just say, what's the domain? Think about it. What's the domain zero of a log? Good. Zero to infinity. Does everybody see why? And then our range will be negative infinity to positive infinity. So this one has a horizontal asymptote. This one has a vertical asymptote. Well, is it, uh, an asymptote is just a value that your uh, function gets really close to but doesn't usually cross. So this is what we're looking at for the exponential, Right. So our asymptote, look, x is changing, but y is always zero, right? So that's why we'd say y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. Okay. Now, this is our 
vertical, vertical is up and down. If you do a vertical jump, you know what I mean? Vertical asymptote. And that's approaching zero, right? You get what I'm saying? And then that's x is different, but y is always zero. No. Right? X is always zero. Yeah. My bad. Okay, moving on. What the heck? You're not kidding. The brightness is terrible. Like, it just hit me how bad it is when I went to click up there. Okay. Well, we'll just keep going for it. So if I said to you, graph this shifted logarithmic function, paying attention. This is a shift of all shifting for all functions works the same. So you'd say? Left one up two. So guys, what you could do, guys, is rewrite this as an exponential, correct? Isn't it going to be 3 to the x, the parent function of a non-shifted exponential? So base 3 to the x, I plotted some points. Now, the logarithm will be switching those x, y points. So here's log the base 3 of x. But now we're shifting all those left one up two. So we'd start here, go over a ninth down two. Now we're going left one, right? Up two, will that put me there? And then, so what, first of all, where's my asymptote going to be at now? Negative one, isn't it? Left one and it used to be at zero. Yeah. So isn't it? Okay, so sweet, we graphed that point. Now we're graphing over a third down one. Now we're going left one and then up two. Yes. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing here. Yep. Uh huh. We're just doing it without writing it down. Yep. So right here we're going. We're over one up zero. So now we're left one means subtract one, right? And then up two. Does that make sense? We added two up one. Good question. And then we're over three up one. So we're going left. Oh, over three up one is so hard to see. Left one up two. So anyways, this is looking like this. So the point of this is. Is what's your, and they, a lot of times we'll just say, given this, what's the domain and range? So, domain is what? Negative 1 to infinity, so we just had to look at where the shift was, right? And our range was all real numbers. Everybody good with that? Depends on what it's asking. Okay, so, like I said, this is really important. A logarithm with no base, see, look, y is equal to log to the no base of x is really log to the base 10 of x. So just like in a square root, we know that you don't write the 2, but it's there. That's the same with this. Log to the base nothing of x is really log to the base 10 of x. So just keep that in mind. If you have log of nothing x, you can undo it by base 10. Does that make sense? Base 10? Okay. And then natural logarithm. So a natural logarithm is log to the base e. Remember, e is just a number. So just like log to the base 10 is just log to the base of a number, log to the base e is just a logarithm with a special base. But they never write, they will never write it like log to the base e. Log to the base e will be written as ln. So natural log. So ln undoes e, and e does undoes ln. Because this is really... You see ln, it's really log of the base e. So I'm going to say that again. ln, it's, um, it's, sorry, it's inverse is e. Does everybody understand? E's inverse is ln. So if you need to solve for something with e, you'll undo it with ln. If you need to undo ln, you'll e both sides. All right. And properties of logarithms hold true for natural logs as well, which makes sense. They're just a logarithm. So right here, simplify. Look. E and ln, are they inverses of each other? Yeah. So our answer would be 5. 2 ln of E. If we simplify that, doesn't ln and E undo each other? So 2 would be our answer, right? 2 times 1. And then right here, ln of E to the second power is? 2. E ln of 12. 12. Okay, good. So it says simplify. This one, these ones are kind of tricky. Uh, kind of. ln of 1 over E. So we can't, we've got to be careful here because... Well, this is all trapped inside ln, correct? So what I want is base e, because base e will undo ln. So let's rewrite it. ln of e to the negative 1. Isn't that what this essentially is? Yeah. So now doesn't ln and e undo each other? So negative 1 would be our answer. Okay? But look at this one. This one's different. This is ln of 1 divided by 3. Do you see how 3 is not trapped? This is not this. Everybody, this is different. This is not the same thing as this. 
This is ln of 1 divided by 3. So what is ln of 1? What's any base to the if you any base to the 1? 0. So we have 0 divided by 3, which is 0. Everybody see how I simplify that? Any base to the 1? Not base 1, but any base, any logarithm to any uh, base of 1 is 0. I didn't say that very good. Okay, so gra graphing natural log equations, guys, is no different than graphing logarithms because y equals e to the x, we can graph that. Remember how we did this last time? We were just plotting points, everybody. So to graph y is equal to ln of x, wouldn't we just switch those x, y points? So everybody look. You see how it looks no different than what we've already done? Okay. All right, so it says write each in exponential or log form. This is similar to the homework. How do you want to do ln? So we'll e both sides. So rewriting this as an exponential would be 2 fifths equals e to the negative 0 0.916. Everybody good? Yes. Uh -huh. Right. So ln is, it stands for natural log, which is really log to the base e. So that's why e end of it. So they never write, instead of writing log to the base e of 2 fifths, they would write ln of 2 fifths, because that's what ln means. Same thing, different way of writing it. Good question, actually, really good question. So over here, what does E ln? So we'd ln both sides, right? Yeah. Ln and E cancel out, so 2 is equal to the ln of 7.389. Like, we're not evaluating, we're just rewriting it. Back and forth. Okay, almost done. Oh, that is it. Okay, that's the lesson. So, do these problems. The rest of the time is yours. That's a lot of problems, but that's because I'm giving you 30 minutes in class to get most of it done.